Welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we will be taking a look at Datadog, ticker symbol DDOG, ticker symbol DDOG. We'll be performing a fundamental stock analysis of Datadog by looking at its financials. Currently, at the time of recording this video, Datadog is trading for just under $121 per share. Over the past year, Datadog stock is up about 32%. Since its IPO in September of 2019, Datadog has been a great performing stock, returning about a 58% compounded annual return. We'll want to dig into the business's financials to understand if the underlying business is developing at the same rate its stock prices. So Datadog is down about $80 from its 52-week high. However, it's still close to nearly double that 52-week low. So it's somewhere in the middle. Datadog is a pretty large company with a $38 billion market cap. As for some background about the business, Datadog is a cloud-native company that provides a platform for developers and IT operations teams to monitor and analyze machine data. The company's software as a service platform integrates and operates infrastructure monitoring, application performance monitoring, log management, and security monitoring to provide real-time observability of its customers' technology stack. Datadog's platform can ingest and analyze large amounts of machine-generated data in real time allowing clients to utilize it for a variety of different applications and through a broad range of features such as dashboards, analytics, collaboration tools, and alert capabilities. The company was incorporated in 2010 and is headquartered in New York, New York. So to get ourselves into the right mindset of analyzing a business, let's go over the four principles of value investing and then get right into the stock analysis. Principle number one, whenever you're buying a stock, you're not just buying and selling pieces of paper or a number that goes up and down on a chart. You're buying fractional ownership of a business and you should think of it as if you're buying the whole business. Principle number two, insist on a margin of safety. All companies are worth the sum of all the future cash that they'll produce from now until judgment day, discounted back by some reasonable interest rate. If you can figure that out, then you should pay a price well below that number. Principle number three, Mr. Market. Your job is to make Mr. Market work for you and not the other way around. Mr. Market gives you quotes on businesses every few minutes. When he's providing you with quotes that are way too low, you should be buying from him. And when the quotes are way too high, you should consider selling. And principle number four, circle of competence. To ask, is this business within our circle of competence as an investor, is to answer the question. Investors don't deserve to earn money from anything that they can't understand. At the same time, you need to be intellectually honest with yourself. We will be performing an eight-pillar analysis as popularized by Everything Money, to take a look at Datadog's financials and come to a fundamental starting point about the business. Starting off with pillar number one, we want Datadog's average five-year PE to be below 22 and a half. So Datadog doesn't have five years of history here. However, what they do have is not so pretty. Currently, they're trading at a PE of negative 1,700. And since they've been public, they've averaged a PE of about negative 1,750. So this is a, a pretty huge X. Pillar number two, we want their average five-year return on capital to be above 9%. So each year over the past five years, they've had a negative return on capital, which means that for every dollar that they're putting into the business, they're losing this percentage on that dollar. So this one's going to be an X here too. They're actually destroying the value of the money that's being invested into the business right now. Pillar number three, we're looking for five-year revenue growth. Their revenue numbers go back to when they were still a private business. But over the past five years, they've more than 10x revenues from 100 million in 2017 to more than a billion dollars in 2021. So this is a huge check. This is huge revenue growth. They're growing revenues at a very high rate. And one of the fundamental questions that you should be asking yourself as an investor, is revenue likely to continue growing at these rates into the future? Has this extreme growth been durable? Pillar number four, we're looking for five-year net income growth. So here, they did not fare so well. In pillar number three, they 10x their revenue. Here, they 10x their loss. So that's not a good sign at all for this business. This is a huge X. Pillar number five, we don't want a business to be diluting existing shareholders. So we're looking for a decreasing share count. However, that's not what we're seeing here. In 2017, when they were a private business, they had 61 million shares outstanding. In 2021, 
they had 310 million shares outstanding. So there's been an 80% dilution of shareholders here. That is a big X and a huge red flag. Unfortunately, that's not too uncommon in these high growth tech businesses. Pillar number six, we're looking for five year free cash flow growth. This one's going to be a huge check. They've grown free cash flows from a small base of $11 million in 2017 to a whopping $277 million as of 2021. So they have 27 x their free cash flow in this time. So that's really good to see alongside some of this revenue growth. It potentially makes their poor earnings more palatable. Averaged out, they've had about $81 million of free cash flow in an average year over the past five years. So we'll need that for pillar seven and eight. Pillar number seven, we want their net debt, which is long and short term liabilities minus cash and cash equivalents to be below their five year average free cash flow multiplied by five. So currently they have about $747 million of cash and cash equivalents, meaning that they would have nearly $750 million left over on their balance sheet if they paid off all of their debt. They've got about $750 million of cushion on their balance sheet. Finally, the big pillar of them all, pillar number eight, we want Datadog's market cap to be below their five-year average free cash flow multiplied by 20. Multiplying their $81 million of average free cash flow times 20 brings us to $1.6 billion. So what we want to be paying for the company based on their cash flows is more than 30 times away from what their current market cap is. This is not uncommon at all to see in these high growth tech businesses. A lot of times the stock price gets way out in front of the business's actual fundamentals. Maybe that's the case here, maybe it's not. Certainly it seems to be. If you're interested in understanding Datadog more, read through their annual report, dive into one of their 10Ks, and really try to understand will their phenomenal revenue growth and free cash flow growth continue into the future. And to justify paying $38 billion for this business versus what its free cash flow profile says you should pay, it's got to continue growing. So in summary, Datadog checks the box on three out of eight pillars. They're growing revenues and free cash flows like crazy, and they've got a good amount of cushion on their balance sheet. However, they have really terrible earnings. They're destroying value on the money that they put into the business. They've significantly, significantly diluted shareholders and their market cap is nowhere near what their free cash flow profile says that we should be paying for this business. So that's it for our stock analysis of Datadog, ticker symbol DDOG, D-D-O-G. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like the video. Subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next. Thanks for learning about Datadog and have a great day, dog.